All right, well, good morning, all. Uh, another commute vlog video. Uh, hopefully not too boring. I have a, a microphone attachment now for the Hero 7, and I'm hoping that it's picking up better audio than it did yesterday. Um, it is a, uh, a Lapel mic uh, that came with a, a little GoPro audio kit for one of my uh, Hero 3s way back when. And uh, I noticed that as a lapel mic, it's way too sensitive, and it was placed near the side of my face inside the helmet, and the audio was distorting and clipping out, so the the signal was just too high on it. Replaced it, or repositioned it, rather, uh, further back in the uh, cheek foam, so maybe the extra cheek foam will dampen it a bit, and I won't get that uh, audio clipping. Uh, we'll see. Anyway. Uh, I'm off to a client site this morning, typical uh, commute routine for me, and I will uh, try to gather my thoughts as I ride here. The GoPro audio adapter is kind of a bulky brick that hangs off to the side of the, uh, the camera. It's got a short little cable about uh, maybe three inches long and then the, uh, the electronics box that gives you a pass-through charging port which is really cool uh, and then the three and a half uh, millimeter audio jack so it gives you the ability to charge on the fly while you're recording uh, but the drawback is the box is just kind of big and bulky so I'm gonna have to stop by Walmart or somewhere and pick up some scotch lock uh, like a heavy-duty Velcro, but it doesn't have the uh, nylon fuzzy side. It's uh, two mating sides, more like really tight Lego bricks. So I find those work better on the outside of helmets to hold cameras and things like that on. So I'll just put a little dab of that on the back of that uh, audio adapter and uh, stick it to the helmet. And then when I don't have it on this helmet, I just have a little patch of uh, scotch lock on there. Hopefully it won't snag anything, but uh, I think it'll work out all right. Hello. As far as camera position, uh, well, we'll go back to the audio footage. I recorded quite a bit of uh, footage yesterday, just commuting back. Hello, don't you back out into the right of way. Um, recorded a bunch of footage but it wasn't really usable the audio was so oversaturated and clipped you just couldn't hear anything uh, camera position seemed to be okay uh, from the little short that I did for my uh, hillbilly cruise control here um, the uh, mic repositioning hopefully will work out we'll find out The other thing I noticed is obviously at speed, the wind noise getting into the uh, foam cover of the mic was kind of a, a nuisance, so I had to either close the shield or just leave it cracked a tiny bit to avoid the wind blast, so that repositioning back into the cheek foam might help out. out there that might have experience in uh, editing video with software selection, equipment selection, feel free to uh, leave comments below and let me know what you use, what you found works out, what doesn't. Uh, I've been having a real hard time with the uh, free uh, GoPro software, so can't complain too much considering it's free, but it, 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 there's, there's too many problems with it on uh, crashing constantly and uh, not being able to edit. Uh, down video clips. Uh, the real problem I seem to be having with it is if I use mixed footage uh, from one camera and another based on different frame rates, whatever, uh, it pukes right at the end of a video uh, clip going into the next clip. The software hangs. You have to force close it, wait for it to die, and uh, then you go back and you've lost those last few edits. It does pick up the uh, autosave file, but that doesn't catch everything all the time and uh, I've been 
unfortunately spending more than uh, oof, God, I don't even know what the math would be on it but uh, let's just say it's about four hours worth of editing for a six minute video so it's not a very good return uh, I know there are probably plenty of people out there that have got more advanced editing tools uh, you know doing the really polished videos which mine are not uh, with the graphics and the swipes and the overlays and all that uh, I'm sure those are just massive undertakings uh, again uh, the state of vlogging uh, or uh, video editing and YouTube production I had never considered any of these things as a video consumer I'm just watching other people's videos and I never commented on videos. I, I didn't really want to put myself out there into the fray. I didn't want to offend anyone uh, with my thoughts or opinions or anything. Uh, so um, I very rarely even gave a thumbs up or thumbs down on videos that I liked uh, because I was afraid of the YouTube metrics forcing more of that down my throat when I may not necessarily want it. Uh, just, you know, if it shows up in your view history uh, and you like it, then it's going to feed you more of it. And that's okay. Uh, I understand how the algorithms work. Uh, but at any rate, I had never really considered the the other side of it, the production side, and what goes into it. It's a, a true eye-opener for me. I'm, I'm so surprised at uh, what it really takes to put out a decent video. You know, the audio, the video, the cutting the clipping and making it coherent there's a lot that goes into it that you don't see as a subscriber or consumer on the other end of it and so I have a whole new very profound respect for uh, all the content creators out there that post up their uh, everything from their vlogs to reviews to everything else there's just a ton to go into it in the back end um, so kudos to all you uh, producers out there that are giving us this content to watch uh, I know mine has uh, got a long way to go to get there. I'm really getting to like this uh, hanging off in the corners bit. There's really no other uh, genre of motorcycling that you can do that on the street and not be a complete tool. Uh, if you do that on a street bike or a sport bike, then that means you're hot dogging and uh, being a danger to yourself and probably other people around you, but on this, it's normal riding posture. <laughs> yeah. And it is windy today, so the tail wag and alignment issue uh, is amplified with the wind, so you'll see me bobbing around like a bobblehead doll or a weevil wobble I'm sure in this video because I'm getting rocked already and I'm just now getting on the highway and it's going to be fun I'm not taking in the HOV today it's going to be enough of a handful of 55 60 everybody in the HOV wants to run 75 80 plus the whole mentality of if I'm paying to drive it I'm going to drive it and I get it I won't stand in your way break-in now, uh, past official break-in anyway, I'm at 224.5, so I'm outside of the uh, 200 mile an hour, or 200 mile an hour, 200 mile, uh, be nice to it while it's breaking in phase, so now I'm a little less uh, leery about steady state speeds on the highway and that sort of thing, I was trying to be pretty mindful of that during break-in, so Full throttle, low throttle, deceleration, uh, you know, side roads, that sort of thing, just to break it in nice and smooth, because I plan on keeping this thing for a long time. That's kind of going back to the, uh, you know, why am I so picky about this thing, and the alignment, and uh, the rear end noises, and all that. I don't, I know that I come off as overly critical, and that is just uh, an unfortunate byproduct of my career. Uh, I'm a uh, network uh, consultant, uh, computer engineer, video, whatever you want to call it, man of many hats. I've been doing this for 30 plus years. And, uh, 
in my profession, it suits me well to be very observant and uh, critical of uh, problems because that's my job is to fix those problems. So I carry that same mentality with me with my machines. They're my machines, and I'm entitled to that opinion. Uh, not necessarily entitled to force it down anyone else's throat. So when I'm pointing out flaws in the machine, I'm just looking for a way to fix them. I'm not complaining about them for the fact that they are there. I'm complaining about them as a mental exercise to try to figure out how to make it better. Uh, so anyway, back to uh, back to this machine. I plan to keep it for probably you know a minimum of six plus years. So if there is a mechanical issue on it now, while it's fresh, that's the easiest time to fix it, especially considering that it's under warranty. Uh, hey, I'm not using my cruise control. I was already accustomed to not having it. Look at this. Um, ooh, look at this, windy. Now look at that. Beautiful, man. 60 miles an hour holding steady on the right here. My right hand is free to scratch my head. Um, anyway, machine issue. Uh, it's new, it's fresh. Now's the time to fix the problem if one exists. And uh, while it's under warranty, obviously, so it's not out of my pocket. If this is something that becomes a uh, known issue three years down the line or four years down the line after my warranty is gone and then it's out of my pocket to fix it, uh, that makes me mad because it's something that could have been addressed while it was covered by the manufacturer. So anyway, that's my rant on uh, the mechanical reliability stuff. Uh, I want it to last a long time, not just for me, but for whoever buys it after I sell it. You know, I don't want them to inherit something that I could have maintained better and didn't. So, I don't know if any of this is coming through on audio or not, but wind noise and the wind itself today is pretty stout. And I need to finish my order on my neck roll for this helmet. It cuts out a lot of the road noise underneath my chin. These Schuberts are super quiet helmets uh, for commuting generally. <laughs> I'm using right now because I pulled the neck roll out. Uh, I've got a uh, cart full of goodies waiting at Revzilla for me to check out. Got a power distribution block that's going to go on this guy for various accessories, uh, the neck roll, a couple of other goodies here and there. I'm going to pull the trigger on that. The sooner I do it, the sooner I get it. Another benefit about these, uh, probably, yeah, see, I just lifted my hand off of the, look at that, woo, man, I am about off the bike. Uh, another benefit about the cruise control, even if you're not going four hands off, it just takes the strain off of your hand so you can readjust and keep them get the pressure points from your gloves, whatnot. Great to have the uh, cruise control. Yeah, let's, let's <laughs> I've said it once and time again, I'll keep beating the horse, spanking the donkey. This thing is a handful on the highway. I've got to get this alignment addressed. That's a perfect segue into uh, the next bit of conversation. Um, I spoke to another dealer in uh, New Braunfels, Texas today. Uh, they also have a Rolo laser alignment system. I presume it's Rolo, I know it's laser alignment. And uh, they've been waiting on their Riker adapters from the manufacturer. They got a call today from either the manufacturer or the distributor. And uh, they said that they should have them in about two weeks uh, and then whatever shipping time is. So sometime around the end of the month, beginning of next month, March, they'll have the uh, prerequisite gear to do the laser alignment on this guy. And they've invited me to come up, have it done. Um, get out of this lane so I'm run over. The, uh, the gentleman that I've been talking to over there, uh, I won't give his name because I don't know if he wants to be in the video, uh, he said that uh, to get permission for filming or video or anything in the shop, he would have to forward that over to his manager. I totally get it. It's, uh, it's liabilities and whatnot. So if they would permit me to uh, video in there, that would be great. I'll post that up, let everybody see how the alignment process works. Um, Sean Smokes, or Sean Smoke, I, I apologize, his video uh, showed the, kind of the result of the process, but didn't show the whole process. 
uh, at least not the ones that I saw. Uh, you can leave the comments below if you have more details on that that I could look up. I would be really grateful. Uh, so Sean's video showed kind of the, the beginning of it and then the end of it, uh, showing the, the final alignment results, and that was great. Um, I kind of want to see the whole thing. I'm just curious. All right, we've got a problem here, and everybody's going to stack up right on the top. Yep, here it comes. Slow down, people. We're all getting there. I do wish the uh, U.S. models had the uh, emergency flashers. I know not a lot of bikes in the U.S. have that. Some of the newer ones do. Uh, BMWs are uh, real good with it. Um, my Hondas uh, have it. Ah, now I see why everybody stopped. That sucks. Poor guy. The left lane is not the place to stop. Ooh. Anyway, um, emergency flashers. Just something to get everybody's attention. Uh, on a bike, you can always fan your front brake a little bit and uh, kind of flash your brake light at people to let them know you're slowing down or there's a caution issue. On the right there, it's a little harder because you've got a, a brake pedal. Uh, you can still do the same thing, but in order to activate it, you're already into the brakes, so that makes you kind of already slowing, and that might not be what you want to do if you got somebody right up your butt. over one because this is another stack up point here on this highway. weather stats, but I'm sure we're looking at 15 to 20 steady with gusts over that. And the twitchy alignment just compounds itself. audio is any good so I'm talking at random here but the uh, fuel consumption issue may not be uh, may not be a real concern for commuters or long distance riders on the Riker Riker riders uh, I am at pay attention to the road here so I don't end up with a hub cap tattoo on me um, I am at 6.7 on the trip for this tank and I'm still at a half a tank now I've already figured out that gauge man it's windy uh, I've already figured out that the gauge is not linear uh, I haven't figured out the exact mechanics or uh, couple, uh, behaviors of it yet but it seems like I'm getting about 60 to 70 miles before it starts to tick down off the pole so uh, I'm guessing that's probably two gallons before it backs off of the pull marker. Uh, my Hondas do the same thing. That I'll get 70 miles or so before they even step down off of the pull uh, marker, but all of them are a little different. So I guess the point is, uh, if this thing is even reasonably accurate, if I'm anywhere near a half a tank, then this thing has got a 200 mile range. 200 mile autonomy, and that is, uh, that's cool. <coughs> oh, excuse me very much. Man, it's windy up here. I feel like I'm riding a buck and bronco. Be nice, Lucy. Hello. Road debris. I don't know what might be in that road debris. Run over a plastic bag thinking it's nothing but a plastic bag and there's a brick in that thing that would make your day, I'll tell you that. Ask me how I know. Ah, 
another good point for uh, safety and uh, rifling as a commuter. Um, I am going to put right on tire sealants in these tires because uh, the fact that these tires are a bit proprietary right now uh, and the owner's manual, operator's manual specifies that you must use, I'm going to take a back thread, I'm tired of this. Uh, this group pipe really sucks through here. Ugh. Doesn't matter what you're in, car, bike, biker, ugh. The grooves are not uh, perpendicular to the direction of travel. They monkey around left and right. You come on over, buddy. I'm going that way. Oh, no. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Be decisive. Uh, where was I going? Oh, yeah. The fact that these tires are a bit proprietary right now, uh, and the operator's manual says that it's only recommended that you uh, get, you know, the branded tires and have them put on at your dealer, uh, makes these a bit of a road hazard problem. So if you've got a flat, a hole, a giant puncture, whatever it is that you can't just repair easily on the road, you're calling roadside assistance. Uh, you know, BRP has got their roadside assistance thing. I have a... Uh, a AAA Premier, whatever it is, RV membership, so I can get anything towed pretty much anywhere I want, uh, and that's what I would use in this case. But in order to stave off that little minor disaster sitting on the side of the road, which is a safety issue, you know how I am on safety, um, I fill all my bikes, scooters, everything with um, ride-on uh, tire sealant. I am not a paid, endorsed advertisee. Uh, I just love the stuff. It works. It's like uh, slime, tire slime on steroids. And boy, does it work. Uh, so, it will plug up to a quarter inch hole, not a puncture. I'm talking a hole. Like somebody took a, a hole puncher to your tire. Uh, it'll coagulate and seal that up to let you get where you need to get. Um, smaller, like nail punctures, self-seal, and you generally don't even know that it's happened. So what I do is I'll inspect my tires every couple hundred miles uh, or so and just make sure I don't have any of the uh, orange ooze uh, coming out of them somewhere. Uh, but yeah, it, it's good stuff. So I'm going to be loading up all three tires of this with ride-on and uh, I'll video that process. They have a, a tire size calculator on their website. You can download it, print it, whatever you want. And it gives you uh, the correct dosages for your tires to figure out uh, on a motorcycle tire with the curved contact patch, how much of the width of the, uh, I'm gonna get here, um, how much of the uh, width of the contact patch you need to protect based on you know, the width of the tire and whatnot. For square profile tires like these, uh, it's automotive in nature, so unfortunately, <laughs> they're going to require a bunch more. Uh, the detractor to that is obviously, uh, all right, I'll let you go. The detractor to that is obviously weight. The more of the stuff you put in a tire, it's liquid, so it's going to make your tire weigh more, that's more unsprung weight, more rotational mass, blah, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Obviously, you don't want to overdose the tire. You want to put in just what you need uh, to stave off your roadside disasters. Um, meeny, meeny, miny, mo, here we go. Uh, the other side benefit of Ride-On is it's a dynamic balancer. Uh, they say in the product literature that you can even take the balance weights off of your tires, off your wheels. Uh, and because it's a semi-viscous uh, solid, you know, it's a, a fluid more or less, um, this is another great place to get hit right here. Uh, it kind of fills in the, uh, the lighter spots of your tire and balances them out. So uh, it's a dynamic spin balancing, a lot like the, uh, uh, those beads, uh, the little plastic or glass beads or whatever it is that you can pour into your valve stem, uh, they act as a dynamic balancer, except this stuff will plug flat, so double good. Uh, anyway, I'll do a uh, review on that, uh, show you guys the, the filling process and all that. There's plenty of videos on YouTube. The manufacturer has a couple of really good ones too, where they take a Ducati 
7 something, I can't remember what it is, uh, Hypersport, and uh, roll the tires right over uh, nail boards and drill holes in it with a handheld drill, and man, it's just painful to watch, but <laughs> you get to see the product in action, and boy, uh, it's just, it's amazing. It just squirts a little bit of the orange goo out. Uh, got to wave at everybody that I've cut off, let them know I'm not intentionally being a dick. Um, It uh, squirts a little bit of the orange goo out and coagulates almost instantly, just within a second or two, uh, and stops the leak. And through all the testing that they do on it, uh, the tire starts out at, you know, whatever normal operating pressure is, 30 some odd pounds, 40 pounds, whatever. By the end of the test, they've abused it, put probably 20 holes in the tire, and it's only down to like 22 pounds. So that is rideable and survivable uh, if you were on the road somewhere. Uh, if you were to get a major puncture or something like that, you know, short of a full blowout, uh, you could ride that out. You could get to the shoulder, you could do something that uh, would get you out of harm's way, or maybe even get you 20 or some odd miles or whatever down the road to get it repaired or you know, do a plug patch on it or something like that. Hmm. Maybe they want to endorse me. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, great product. Anything that I use personally that I've had experience with that I recommend, those are the things that I, I would like to do reviews on on the channel uh, to let everybody know what works for me. Uh, I am an avid rider. Uh, I have lots of machines and I put a lot of miles down every year. So, yeah, the stuff that works for me, man, it should work for other people. There's a good tight corner. Ah, nanny. Nanny kicked in. Outside tire. Put it in sport mode to have fun. Um, yeah, so the things that work for me, I, I generally would think it would work for other people uh, in similar situations. And I would not endorse anything that I don't like and trust myself. Uh, you know me. I'm not PC, and uh, if I see a problem, I'm going to call it out. video here, uh, not to give away my client locations and where I work, their privacy and all that, so uh, catch y'all later.